phoenixtypewriter.com here. We're going to show you some basic features of the IBM Selectric 2 with correction. This machine with the serial number 7, 7 million was probably built in 81 or 82 maybe. They didn't go much higher than 7 million. They never went to 8 million on the Selectric 2s. Okay, this machine has uh, been reconditioned. It's ready for sale. It's on as quiet as could be. Just mint condition. Working and looking like new. Let's stick a piece of paper in here and give this a little run here. Type's perfect. Alright, let's close this lid and show you some of the features of Selectric 2. Up here, we'll start right in the corner. It's got dual pitch lever. It's got Pica and Elite. Pica is 10 pitch. Elite is 12 pitch. Just move this lever. 12 is a little closer together. So if you type 12 letters here, that would be 1 inch right here. If you put this on 10, and you were to type 10 letters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that's 1 inch. So let's do a little side by side. Comparison to Pike and Elite. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're going to put this on twelve. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that's that's the difference there. It crowds letter a little bit on Elite and Pike gets spread out a little more. So that's the Pika in Elite. 10, 12 levers. Most electric tubes have this lever. Some don't. Some are single pitch only. If it's single pitch, the scale here will only show one, one scale. But the dual pitch has got two scales right here. This lever is a copy control lever. A, B, C, D, E. On the Selectric 3s, they eliminated this lever. So there's nothing there. Because this really needs to be on A all the time. It was made for uh, when you had multiple carbon sheets, like if you had five, you had paper, carbon, paper, carbon, paper, carbon, paper, carbon. You're trying to do five copies or four copy machines. You would move this back accordingly to the thickness of how much stuff you're putting in here. But nowadays, on A is best. If it's back here, you'll get, you can have potentially poor print. It won't print as good. Put it on A. This lever here is a half space lever. It lets you manipulate the, the machine. See it move just a little bit. It moves backwards a half and half a space, and you can manipulate it. You can squeeze something in a spot if you have to. It's a little tricky, but okay. We got a plat knob here. If you actually push this knob in, it moves in. See that move in a little bit. So it's got clicks right here. If you move this in, it's a variable. No clicks, and you can push this in and line it up to the finest degree you want to this red line or whatever you want to line up to. And it pops out automatically. Goes back to the ratchet mode. Again, you push this in and you have complete variable here. Turn it while you're pushing it in. Let it go. Back to normal. Okay, paper bail up here. Just holds the paper down. This is officially called an eraser table. You would, if you made a mistake, on here you could potentially come up here and use this as a, as a spot to erase, as a flat spot. Or you can actually write right here, help with IBM. So that's called an eraser table. Alright, we've got paper bale. Let's move it over here a little bit. Right here is your line spacing, one, one and a half and two. It's as uh, simple as this. It, it goes up one space, one is on one. It's on one and a half, it goes, it's going to go three clicks. One, two, three, that's one and a half. It's back here on two, it's going to go two clicks. One, or four clicks. Two space, two line spaces, so one, two, three, four. That's that paper release, so you can straighten the paper out or pull it out. Put it back, roll the paper through. This is also a detent release. Um, it's got clicks. If you flick this, it will get rid of the clicks. It's not a variable, it just releases the ratchet. 
and when you put it back in it falls into the ratchet spot. This over here moves separately on this knob. It's a paper end guide but and it lines up with this line. You'd have to look in the book to see how that works. That way you can tell it's to the end of the page. Something you don't really use that often anymore. We're not going to focus on that. Let's open this lid up, take a look inside. See what else we can find in here. Well, let's start with the ribbon. IBM ribbon, IBM correction ribbon, IBM ball, IBM indicator. Okay, right on the ribbon, right off the bat here, here's a lever right here. This says R and S. If this inadvertently gets slid over, it's going to latch open and it won't type. That's called stencil mode. That's what the S stands for. Roll the paper through here. It's not going to type. Nothing. Acts like it's typing, but it's not going to work. All you got to do, if that gets inadvertently moved over or if it's not typing, check here. Push this little button in and it goes back to R, which is ribbon. And then it's, it's, it'll work. it's working just fine. Um, this inadvertently can get moved because it's, it latches. So make sure it's on R for a ribbon. All right, the ribbons come out pretty easy. You just move the thread lever, take it out of the guides, pop that ribbon out. There we go. Simple as that. When you put it back in, make sure it's around the post. Drop it in. Put it through the guides. Tighten it up with the arrow. Close the red lever. Correction ribbon is this arm on the side. Open that up. You can pull this ribbon right on out. When you get a new ribbon, stretch it out a little bit like this. Put it on this. Put it through the fork here. Pull it across. Put it between the guide wire and the card guide. And drop it on the post. Tighten it up. Close it. I have a separate video for ribbon installation. You can look that up on Phoenix Typewriter on my YouTube page. It's got a clear card guide here so you can line stuff up right above the red line there. Yes. So you can space over. It should be right above that red line if everything is right. And everything is right on this machine, of course. Let's see what else we can do. Margins, pretty straightforward on this machine, about the simplest on earth. You just move it where you want it. Let's say you want it a little further that way, just face over. Move that over there. there. This side has got a bell, so you want to line it up, you know, with the end. When it gets over there, it will ring the bell. About seven spaces before here. There we go. And then when it gets there, it's going to lock. It locks. All I got to do to adjust this is push it in and slide it. That's as simple as it gets. Let's see what else we can look at here. I'll show you how the correction works. Correction is a two-step procedure on this. So it's not a... You have to tell it what you want it to correct. So let's say you type the word the wrong. P-H, and you went R, accidentally hit R. You would press this button once, go back over the R, hit the R again, and it's going to take it off the paper. It's going to wait for you to put in the E, and there you go, you got the word the. Again, let's say you were to type the word time wrong. P-I-M-R. Oops. Okay, backspace, correct backspace over the R. That's the mistake. Hit the R again. Removes it. Put the E in there. And now the word is spelt right. So it's a two-step procedure. Uh, it's pretty straightforward up here. We got backspace. Brings you back. We have index right here that's going to index up without returning. Feed your paper in like that if you like. Or you can do like me. This is my method. See that? Paper in, pull the pail back, ready to go. All right, let's see what else we got. We can show you how the tabs work while we're at it. So this has one tab stop set. It's not margins. Let's put the margins all the way to the end. 
it's got one tab spot right there set. If we want to clear that, we come right over here to this button right here, it's right next to the tab, clear. So now, it's going to tab all the way across, all the way across the page. And we'll return back. Tabs are for columns, like, like accounting columns, like a column, a column, a column. So if you wanted a column here, hit set right there. With the column right there, hit set right there. I say you want right there, hit set. Now we got three set. One, two, three. So we're going to come in here. Come back. So now we got columns. You can also do an all clear on this. Go all the way over to that side. Hold clear. Hit return. Hold that down, hit return. That clears them all. They're all back clear. Generally, the tabs don't get used much. Maybe for uh, maybe for an indentation here, like if you were to type a letter, you would want five spaces in. One, two, three, four, five. It's set. So if you type a letter, you can paragraph indentation like that. So you might use it for that. Let's clear that out. I'm just going to set one in the middle right here so we can... So basically if you wanted to jump over a little bit you could just jump to the center. It's a nifty little feature. Okay, margin release right here. You got a margin here, you, you're coming back to it every time. If you want to go past it for some reason, just press that down and either hit return or press down and backspace. Margin still stays there, but you just went past it. It's called a margin release. It's not margin set or clear. It's just margin release, one-time use. Same thing with this side. Let's say you, you got the, uh, you're got you at the end and the bell rings. And the machine locks. So we're stuck. You know, all you do is press this down, and it's going to let you type. Not to do anything else. All right, that's margin release. We did tabs. Of course, we all know how to do shift capitals and capital lock. Everybody knows that. Express key over here will let you, uh, instead of returning and going up a line, you can hit express and just move backwards as much as you press the button. So if you want to go back a little, a lot, that just sends it back without indexing your paper up. Okay, we did correction, space bar, everybody knows that. A uh, repeat key is only the dash, underscore, or dash. X does not repeat, nor does the period or any other button on here. Let's see what else we can show you. That's, that's pretty good for now. If you have any questions or comments, you can always contact us through the contact page or contacts down here comments or you can call us directly or go to our website phoenixtypewriter.com and uh, that's all we've been doing for 37 years is working on IBM typewriters of course we do work on a lot of vintage typewriters nowadays too which are pretty cool in fact we've got a 1934 Corona here that's going to get reconditioned it's a beauty it's got these gorgeous key tops but this is out of the case, and we're uh, polishing and fixing up the case, and we're going to completely reconstruct this machine. So that machine is probably about 80 years old, and it's going to come out mint. All right, again, Phoenix Typewriter, have a good day.